So today we'll be exploring Microsoft Loop and how it works. And today I'll be passing over to Matt from Collaboration Coach to dive into how Microsoft Loop components, previously known as Fluid components, work inside of Microsoft 365 tools. So I'll pass over to Matt. A huge thank you. Please do make sure to subscribe to both our channels, Collaboration Coach and Keep Productive here on YouTube. And I'll pass over to Matt. Cheerio. Hello, it's Matt. And thanks for having me back on Keep Productive. And this time we're going to be talking about Loop components. Microsoft Loop was announced at Ignite a couple of weeks ago and components are a feature of it. Loop components are items that you would insert into Office documents like tables and lists. They can be reused in other apps and by other people and the data in them is live and can be updated in real time. Anyway, rather than talk about them too much, I thought I'd just show you how it works. So in this video, I'm gonna create a loop component in Teams and share it. Then I'll show you how you can co-author a component in Teams and in your browser. And then finally, we'll look at where the loop files are stored. So let's have a look. So I should point out that this feature is in preview in Teams at the moment. I'm using the latest preview of the Teams app for Windows here. And at this point, loop components are only available from the chat app. So I've got a chat going here with Amrit and Polly. Let's imagine that we're working on a project together and we want to get a task list to track our work. To create the task list, I'll use the loop icon here. When I choose that, I get a list of components that I can add to my post and I'll choose the task list. The list is added to my post and I'll give it a title of project tasks. Before I post this, I want to show you the sharing options I have at the top here. By default, anyone in my organization could have access to this task list if they have a link to it. I can drop this list down and change the scope of that sharing just to the people in this chat, which would limit it to Amrit and Polly. Or I could get very specific and choose individuals and groups. I can also change what they can do with the task list by unchecking allow editing so they can't make changes to it. So I've set the permissions. Also notice the component is in draft. Now I'll post it and the list is now live and Polly and Amrit can see it from Teams and they can start updating it. Thanks for watching so far and if you like this video, check out our YouTube channel Collaboration Coach. You'll find lots more Microsoft tutorials there. And we've just launched an online school. Collaboration School is full of original on-demand classes focusing on Microsoft 365, all written and taught by me. You can get started for free with a seven day trial if you go to www.collaboration.coach now. Now we're all adding tasks to the list and this is all in real time. And as we do, you can see our presence indicators. We all have different colors to make it easy to see who's who. And if I hover over them, it will show me their full names. Notice when I type an at sign into a task, it will show me a list of all the people in the chat that are using the component. And I can choose one and that will create a clickable link that shows me more detail about that person. App mentioning is a feature found all over Loop Components. You can see that when we're in the same task, it will mix the colors. And this button shows me who is currently updating the task list. And I can click here to see who has access to the list. Even though the task list has already been posted to Teams, I can still add more components to it. If I wanted to add a table for my contacts here, for example, I can just type forward slash and that will pull up the component menu again. I'm gonna choose a table and it's added to the post. And now we can all start adding data to the table. Each column and row of the table can be moved and resized. And you can right click it to show a detailed menu with more options for managing how the table looks. You can keep on adding more components to your post as you need to. But for now, let's look at how to edit this component in a page. At the top here, I have a title with a link. And then over here on the right, I have a copy link button. 
What both links allow me to do is open this component in a browser. If I click on the link here, it will open a browser and now I'm looking at the component on a page. I can carry on editing here and so can Amrit and Polly. And I can invite new people to come and work on this with us. If I hit the share button up the top here, it lets me create a share link in the usual way. And I'm going to share this with Sarah and send it to her. She'll receive an email with a link to my page in it. And now Sarah is here editing the page with us. We can update existing components and add new ones as we need to. And if I switch back to Teams, you can see all those updates are being added here too in real time. The key thing to remember here is that wherever the component is, whether it's in the browser, in Teams, or perhaps in the future in Outlook, OneNote or Word, it can be updated in real time. OK, so the last thing I wanted to show you was where these things are stored. You can see at the top of the page here, I have a drop down. And just like a Word doc or a spreadsheet, I have a file name that I can change and a path to its location. And I can even access the version history here as well. If I choose the location link here, it will take me to that folder. This folder is in my OneDrive. And because I created the component in Teams, it's in the Microsoft Teams chat folder. And I can also see the file itself, which is called project.fluid. I can move that Fluid file to other locations and it will still be available in Teams. So access from Teams is not dependent on the location of the Fluid file. Imagine being able to share a component in a OneNote page so that everyone could update their task progress live in a meeting or doing the same from an email in Outlook. This functionality is being added to those apps soon. Loop components could enable all these types of scenarios really soon. OK, that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for having me and I'll see you next time.